thank those two ladies who came up with the stations for us to use in January for our prayer session. I don't have the ability to come up with things like that that they have, and it's just remarkable to me. And it was such a good thing that we the elders felt like that we didn't need to keep it to ourselves, but it needed to be shared with the entire congregation. Linville came up with this that's on the screen now. If you defined humility, I dare say you would not define it hornless or having no horn. But that's what it says. When you look for the definition, it means that you're hornless or you have no horn. He waited till the end of the lesson, his part of it, to tell you what that meant. How many of you think you know what that means already? Show of hands. Okay. How many of you have ever had to toot your own horn? Sometimes if you don't toot your own horn, nobody else is going to help you. They're not going to toot it for you. But, but really, humility is meaning that you don't have a horn to toot. It's not about you. Now, I'm going to tell you a story and save the ending until the end of my session. An old Indian chief held his grandson and he explained to him that within each of us there are two wolves and they battle daily. One wolf is evil. It's made up of anger, jealousy, greed, resentment, lies, and ego. The other one is good and it's made up of joy, peace, love, hope, humility, kindness, and truth. And he asked his grandson to think about it. I ask you to, as you're paying attention to this part of the lesson, to think about that also. And we will give you an answer in just a minute. Humility that we study about we will first read from James, the fourth chapter, verses 6 through 10. But he gives us more grace. That is why the scripture says, God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. And purify your heart, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up. We need to pray that as, we, as Christians, we need to bow our knees every day before the Lord so that we can receive the grace that is promised to us and that will make our daily lives so much easier to live. I challenge you, the first thing you do of a morning is that you bow to your knees and pray to God. And I promise you that it will make the rest of the day much easier for you. In Micah the 6th chapter in verse 8, we read, He has shown you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. We also need to pray that those that have a personal relationship with the Lord will walk in the spirit of humility. That we will follow the example that Jesus led us by the way he walked. And that we will live each day with a recognition that pride comes before destruction. But humility brings us to honor. In Proverbs 16 and verse 9, it says, Better to be lowly in spirit along with the oppressed than to share plunder with those that are proud. Once again in our prayers, we need to pray that believers know what it means to value humility that God hears the cry of the humble and will deliver them. 
And it's much better to live among the lowly and share, than share the wealth of the proud. That God's presence accompanies those that are of contrite and humble spirits. First Peter 3, 7. Husbands, in the same way, be considerate as you live with your wives. And treat them with respect as the weaker partner and as heirs along with you of the glorious gift of life so that nothing, so that nothing can hinder your prayers. We as this congregation, we as Christians, we as a nation need to pray for our families and for our homes. We need to pray that every person in a Christian home, husband or wife, will be humble in spirit. And by doing this, we know that our prayers will be answered. 1 Peter 5 and verse 5 and 6. In the same way, you who are younger, submit yourself to the elders, to your elders. All of you clothe yourselves with humility toward one another because God opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may lift you up in due time. This congregation is extremely blessed with young people. We need to pray that the young will be clothed in humility, that they will learn to respect the elders. And I'm not referring just to the elders of this congregation. I'm talking about the elderly of the congregation, everyone that they need to lift their concerns up. Their prayers are just as important as the elderly. They need to lift those concerns up to God and trust God to exalt them in proper time. The Indian chief kept his son on his lap, and he had told him what the, two evil, what the evil wolf and the good wolf had within the body. And the little boy looked up and he said, Grandfather, which wolf wins the battle? And he says, son, the one you feed and exercise. We need to learn to feed and exercise the proper wolf within us. Humility is not tooting your own horn. Humility is letting the other be better. It's not about us. Great slogan that they've used so many times here at Cross Point. It's not about us. Would you pray with me, please? Father, our prayer this morning is that we resolve today to start every day of our lives by humbling ourselves before you in prayer. We pray that you would give us the grace, Father, that you have promised. May we live our lives as your son did and Use the example that he taught us of the spirit of humility. We want to treat all as we should. We want to show love and mercy to everyone that is around us. May we honor you, and may we also receive honor. Let us learn the value of humility. For we know that you are with the people, with the ones who have the contrite heart and the humble spirit. And we so want to be with you that we want to have that kind of spirit. May we as husbands be considerate of our wives and treat them with respect, just as Jesus treated his bride. We don't want anything to hinder our prayers. We pray for the elderly of this congregation and of the world that they will be shown the proper respect, the respect that they have earned. And we ask that you, consider, that you would take care of their concerns. And Father, we thank you so much for the young people. And let us show them by example the proper acts of humility. Let us learn that it's not about me but rather it's about you, your spirit, your son, and his bride. 
They're to be first. Then those around us to be next. And then us. <coughs> Our prayer is that we show others around us to be important. Father, we pray that you would bless us with the humility that we need. In the name of your Son, we pray all of this. Amen. Thank you, Scotty. The section I've got today is about being in prayer in our daily lives and the things that we do as we go about living as Christians upon this earth. We've all heard the old adage from a lot of coaches on a lot of teams to say that we need to get back to basics. We need to get back into praying every day. Sometimes we just need to get back to basics, basics to please our God. How does God communicate with us today? Through Scripture, what's said in His Word. By carefully reading His Word, we get back to basics. By internalizing those words in our hearts, by meditating on those things and savoring His words as we read the Holy Scriptures, by living out His instructions in our daily lives. How do we communicate with our God? By simply humbling ourselves and talking to Him, speaking to Him like He's our friend, personally, on a personal level, and reverently, because He's the King of kings and He's the Lord of lords. And by pouring out our feelings and our concerns and our requests, often, meaning daily, and many times a day in some cases. First Timothy, the writer there, tells us this. I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all of those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good, and it pleases God, our Savior, who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. So we need to be in prayer so that God's people will, will unite in praying for all of those who are in authority and that we may lead quiet and peaceful lives in godliness and holiness. Why? It pleases God. And it draws us nearer to Him so that we can be closer to Him. Matthew 6.33 tells us this, but she, seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Let's pray then that all Christians will seek God first each day, privately, before getting physically involved in his work for the day. Why? It pleases God, and it puts us in touch with his power. Philippians, the writer tells us, don't be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. We learn from this passage that the prayers of God's people should be characterized by a sense of urgency and fervency, and that as Christians, our first response should be to pray any time that we become anxious about a particular situation or circumstance or relationship. Why? This pleases God and puts our souls at rest. And finally, in Ephesians chapter 4, the writer there tells us this, So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, and the evangelists, and the, pa the pastors and the teachers to equip his people for, for works of service. Listen to this statement. So that the body of Christ may be built up until we reach a unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining the whole measure of the fullness of God. So then, in our daily prayers, we may remember to pray to God that he will give our leaders wisdom as they call the congregation to intercession and guides them to an understanding of the times that we live in. This too pleases God and builds up the body of Christ, the church. Will you pray with me, please? Almighty God, we come before your throne right now, thanking you for this hour of worship, 
for the songs that we sing, for this avenue of prayer. Father, for being able to read your scripture in freedom in this land of ours. May we pray for the leaders of this nation as they go about making the decisions that impact us on a daily basis. Father, we pray for peace. We pray for unity of the Spirit. We are so thankful and so blessed in this congregation. But Father, we want the world to know that we stand rock solid for what you, for your righteousness, for your kindnesses. May we be about loving you, serving our neighbors as Jesus Christ served those around about him. And may this day be about being humble, being in prayer, approaching you. And Father, we've already read the scripture that says that you will hear us and that you will heal our land. Help us to do that as a church of your people. May we be the guidepost in pointing the world around us to your Son, Jesus Christ. We love you, Father. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Sing with me the first verse of Seek Ye First. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you, singing hallelujah, hallelujah. We all have times when we need to seek God again and return to him. If we look at the next visual, there's a, a statement at the bottom. Let us pray that our knowledge of God through these and other scriptures, the life and sacrificial death of Jesus our Lord, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit will draw us closer and cause us to seek and return to walk with God, our God, each day. Isaiah said, For this is what the high and exalted one says, I live in a high and holy place, but also with the one who is contrite and lowly in spirit, to revive the spirit of the lowly and to revive the heart of the contrite. And repeating our Second Chronicles passage, which is so important, If my people who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. And Isaiah again, Is not this the kind of fasting I've chosen? to loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke to set the oppressed free and break every yoke? Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter when you see the naked to clothe them and not turn away from your own flesh and blood? then your light will break forth like the dawn and your healing will appear. Then your righteousness, and we might add the righteousness from God to us, then your righteousness will go before you and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then you will call and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help and he will say, Here am I. The wise man in the Proverbs said, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. And Jesus from John 15, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit apart from me. You can do nothing. 
and then his famous words from the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 6. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things, all that you need will be given to you. In Mark 16, the marching orders, go into all the world and preach the gospel, the good news to all creation. In Paul from Romans chapter 12, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of the world, of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind by receiving the Holy Spirit by your obedience. Hebrews chapter 12. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. And Peter said, For you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood. Notice those two words. You're either a family of royalty, the kings and queens, and you're either the family of the priests. You are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness, out of the darkness of our sins, into his wonderful light, his light of forgiveness. And Peter remarked, But in your hearts, therefore, revere Christ, make him Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. The answer to that is the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And from 1 John, John who loved Jesus, said, but if we walk in the light, that's where we need to be. That's where I want to be. As he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son purifies us from all sin. What a blessing. Allow me to conclude this seek and return section by rephrasing, by paraphrasing, and praying Psalm 27. You may choose to close your eyes and simply listen, or you may view the, the psalm as we pray it. I'd like for you to imagine, as I often do, being before God's throne as we speak in his presence. Psalm 27, paraphrased as a prayer. You, O Lord, are our light and our salvation. Whom shall we fear? You are the stronghold of our lives. Of whom shall we be afraid? No one, nothing. When the wicked advanced against me to devour me, it was my enemies and foes who stumbled and fell. Thank you. One thing I ask from you, O Yahweh God, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life and gaze upon the beauty of my Lord to seek you in your holy temple. For in the day of trouble you will keep me safe in your dwelling place. You will hide me in the shelter of your hand and sacred tabernacle, and you will set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted, and I will sacrifice and worship with shouts of joy. I will sing and declare your name in the midst of the church. 
Hear my voice when I call, O Lord God. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says of you, seek his face. Your face, O Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me and do not turn your servant away in your anger. For you have always been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me, O God, my Savior, though my father and mother forsake me. You, O Lord, will receive me and never forsake me. So teach me your marvelous ways. Lead me in a path that does not go astray. I remain confident of this. I shall see thy goodness in the land of the living that is in the present. Therefore I will wait for you, O Lord God. And by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ, we strive to pray, listen, and respond to your voice. And let us all say, Amen. I was watching TV this morning as I was getting ready to go to church this morning and I was seeing that uh, Prince Edward is somewhere in a foreign country and he's playing with the impoverished children and, and trying to show compassion toward people that he'd um, not been able to associate with before because he is the prince, you know. And as he was doing these things, he was... Um, showing concern for people's lives that he had never had any kind of communication with before. And as we talk this morning, I think about the fact that we, as children of God, have got a close contact with the most powerful and wonderful and majestic power in the universe, our Lord God. See, we are his children. Brother Baxter said we're a member of a royal priesthood, a holy nation. We are blood connected to God through Jesus. And because of that connection, isn't it an awesome thing to know that we have the power to just mention the name and to tap the source of power that will bring the healing of nations. My job is to tell you, then God will. Then God will hear from heaven. Isaiah 59 verse 1 says, Surely the arm of God is not too short to save, nor his ears too dull to hear. Praise God that his hands are not too short to save. Can you imagine having a God that just couldn't quite reach you? A Savior that just couldn't quite get there. That's not our God. Our God has got plenty of power. And, and he has the ability to hear us. Even in our most dire needs, in the most silent times, in the most constraining times, God hears us. So claim that power. Another thing that God does for us is He's willing to forgive. It says in Proverbs 28, chapter verse 13, whoever conceals their sins does not, uh, uh, does not prosper, but those who confess and renounce their sins find mercy. Thank God that His promises to extend mercy to those who confess and forsake their sins. Thank Him that He is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. See, I'm not capable of attaining salvation. God is capable of of atoning me and giving me salvation. David said that it's great to know 
that our sins are covered, that they're forgiven. Not that we're sinless through some kind of self-ability, but that we're saved despite ourselves because of our faith in God. So we have forgiveness for our sins. Renounce your sins. Also, God is willing and able to heal our land. Jeremiah 3, verse 22 says, Return, faithless people, and I will cure your backsliding. And the people's response was, Yes, we come to you, for you are the Lord our God. We come to you. Hosea 6, verse 1 says, Come, let us return to the Lord. He has torn us to pieces, but He will heal us. He has injured us, but He will bind bind our wounds. Praise God that He has has promised to heal those who have fallen away and bind up the wounds of the torn and the bruised and restore the years the locusts have eaten. He will bind our wounds And He will help us to make it through. He will give us comfort and strength. And we must pray that He will take care of us. You know, when I think about prayer, I think about my father. My father was Vaughn Minor. He was a good Christian man. And he studied his Bible a lot in his room. He And sometimes I'd go close to his door and his, his room and his door would be closed. And I'd know... Dad's in there and he's praying or he's studying or he's preparing for, a, for something he's going to do to further the kingdom of God. And I might have a question. I might have an issue. There's something going on in my life. And I, may, and I would knock on the door. And I'd hear that voice. Who is it? I'd say, this kill, Dad. He'd say, come on in, son. And I'd go in there, and he'd be sitting on the side of his bed with his Bible in his hand, maybe some notes beside him. And As he's doing that, he'd say, sit down, son. And I'd sit on the side of his bed. And he'd say, what can I do for you? And I'd tell him my issue. It, it might not be anything. It might be I need a tire for my truck. Or it might be that I've, I've had a difficulty at school. Or I might have an emotional problem that I need some help with. And I'd just mention it to him. And he'd always have the answer. He'd always have help. And he'd always be comforting and strengthening to me. And then I think about my God. When's the last time you knocked on God's door? And the Father is always there. He's never short armed you. He'll never be dull to hearing you. Oh, I ain't got time for you, son. Uh, Come back later. Or, uh, you know, your issues are not important to me. You know, I've got world peace to handle. Or I've got other issues around here that you're just sort of a, a sidebar for me at this point in time, son. He never says that. He says, come in. Tell me what's wrong. Let me help you. Now, are we the kind of people that that's the last resort? Or is that our first resort? Let's make God and the knocking on God's door and the desire to pray to God be our first resort. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, thank you for the opportunity for you to hear our request for us to be able to know that you're in heaven but you're also in our hearts bless us father as we live our lives and help us to do your will and to serve you each day father thank you for giving us the healing of our nation and our personal healings and father help us to rely on you to turn our nation back to you and to 
Help us to turn our moral values back to you. Father, we'd like to ask you to forgive us for the sins we've committed against you. We've made some terrible, terrible mistakes, Father. We know we're not right, except for the fact that we have the blood of Jesus. And you've promised us forgiveness of our sins. And Father, we rely on you to forgive us our sins. We know we have the hope of eternal life. And we love you because you're willing to make that sacrifice for us. Father, help us to be more prayerful people. Help us to be willing to come before you, Father, and, and knock on your door. Sit on your bed. Knowing you have your arm around us. And that you will do what you said you will do. Father, help us to take strength in the Scriptures. Help us to know that we have protection from you. That you are our God, but you are our Father. And we have our brother Jesus. And he's our strength and hope too. Father, bless us as we leave this service today. That we'll step out and be the light in this community to shine for you. Thank you, God, for loving us so much. We're looking forward to eternal life with you, Father. It's our joy to know that whatever happens from here on, we have eternal life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today, there may be those here to, that have not had the opportunity to have Jesus in their lives. You have not had the opportunity to, to confess that Jesus is the Son of God and to be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. We'd like to take care of that today. If there are those here today that have been Christians for a long time, yet you feel like you've not been on the right side of God in the near past, and that you've had struggles in your life that you've not been handling like you need to handle, that you know that we need to pray for you specifically and personally, we'd be willing to come to you this morning and pray with you in the place that you are now. Or you can come forward, and we'd be more than glad for you to confess your faults before the congregation and pray for you here. If you have a need, a spiritual need this morning, come and share that need with us as together we stand and sing.